The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus taught his disciples, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. The Gospel of the Lord. And now our video. Two old friends get together at a bar for the first time in several years. One friend has not changed a bit. The other friend has changed a lot. Hey, Tim. How's it going? It's been a while. Oh, I know. Probably seven years. Yeah, why don't you have a seat? We'll catch up a bit. All right.
God doesn't really sound that loving if he wants you to give everything up. God was willing to give something up for us, his only son, Jesus, to show how much we are worth it. So yes, God wants us to be willing to give up things for him. But he gave, he first gave up his son for us. He also promises us that our reward is greatly outweighs our sacrifice. Living with God forever in paradise is that reward, and I hope that I will be willing to give everything up to gain that treasure, even like a pearl that is tarnished and covered in filth. However, with each step I take closer to God, I more become polished and my value shows more and more. Um, with each step that I move from being worldly toward being more holy, more of the grime of the world is washed off of me. Until one day, I might be completely clear of it and polished before my God. I can never be completely polished here on earth, but I pray daily that God continues to help me to get closer to the goal. So, how much more washing do you need? Less than what I started, but I always have a ways to go. Well, how much washing do you think I need? Only God would know that answer. If you truly want to know, why don't you come to church this Sunday, and God can wash us together. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, this Lent, we've had posted those signs in our community with an image of the cross of Christ at Calvary and ask that fundamental question, why? Why did Jesus suffer and die? The answer is bigger than anything we can put on a bumper sticker or a sign or post on Facebook or Twitter. In fact, Jesus' passion and death is the central mystery of our faith. And Jesus' parables are as good a way as any to enter into this mystery. So during Lent, we're listening to Jesus' parables, but listening to them in light of the cross of Christ. It has been interesting already to see how we bring things to these parables. And if we bring, in this case, the suffering of Jesus, it can impact what this parable means to us. Now, sometimes Jesus' parables are pretty easy to understand and interpret. Sometimes it's just A is like B. A comparison is made between a spiritual truth and an everyday story or event in the world. At other times, Jesus actually tells us what his story means. And we tend to like it when that meaning is as straightforward and simple as possible. But many times, interpreting one of Jesus' parables is not so easy. In fact, it can be downright challenging because the meaning is not all that clear. So people can walk away with different interpretations, perhaps complementary with we, each other, but not exactly the same. Now, some of, us, um, some of us may be tempted to say, well, which is it? They can't both be right. But actually, that's not true. They may both be right if Jesus has given the listeners the freedom to bring their unique perspective to one of his stories. We sometimes read the Bible this way. We bring what Martin Luther called our tentatio, a, a uh, Latin word that means our personal experiences and trials, to a scripture text. And God speaks through the Holy Spirit to those trials. It's often been said that we don't actually read the Bible. The Bible reads us, where we are in our lives. As a pastor, I hear this all the time. Sometimes someone will thank me for some uh, sermon that they said did this or that, and then I'll think, I don't think I ever said what they said I said. Um, but somehow the person listening heard it, because he or she brought a particular perspective to the preaching. Meanwhile, other people will not have heard or know what that person is talking about at all. Two meanings can come because there are two different hearers, just like 
light may be the same light, but it reflects differently off different colors. The two parables of the hidden treasure and the priceless pearl are just like that. The parable has the same storyline, something very valuable is found, and the finder sells everything to own what has been found. Over the centuries, those listening to these parables have come up with two primary meanings. Both meanings are confirmed in other passages of scriptures. Both meanings are as true as true can be. If Jesus had any one of them in mind, he doesn't say. So for us, it's as if two people are looking at a series of paintings in a gallery showing Jesus in his passion. The two look at Jesus as he is arrested in Gethsemane. They see him beaten and flogged. They see him mocked and spit upon. And another painting shows him crowned with thorns and wearing a scarlet robe on his shoulders. They look in as he's led to the cross where they know he will lay down his life for them. Then they hear Jesus' stories of the hidden treasure and the priceless pearl. Man finds a treasure hidden in a field. He sells all he has to buy the field and own that treasure. A merchant in search of a fine pearl finds one and sells all he has to own that one. Because these two viewers have brought different needs to the paintings and to the parables, each of them walks away with a different message. Both their messages, though, are rich and real and true. The first listener has struggled for many years with feelings of worthlessness. She remembers an adult telling her as a teenager that she would never amount to much. Her job seems menial and inconsequential, and her boss's constant criticism makes things worse. She wonders if anyone really loves her anymore. Her husband and children seem to be so busy she feels more like a maid than a wife and a mother. For this person, as she watches Jesus go painfully to the cross, she hears his parable saying that she is the treasure. She is the priceless pearl. For her, Jesus sold everything. He laid down his life for her. She is worth that much to Jesus. He loves her that much. This message of Jesus' parable addresses her self-doubt. She finds herself immensely valuable, not only to Jesus, but also to her family and her colleagues at work. The other person looking at the paintings of Jesus' passion has a different take on his parable of the hidden treasure and of the priceless pearl. He is like Tim in our parable for today, the video, whose whole life has been changed because of his Christian walk. For him, these parables mean that Jesus Christ is the priceless treasure of his life. He does not see himself as this treasure in the parable, but Jesus. Jesus' sacrificial love has made Jesus Tim's most treasured possession. He looks and realizes that Jesus did all this suffering because of his sins, and it overwhelms him, and it puts him on a whole new path of life. An old German hymn by Johann Frank says it well, Jesus, priceless treasure, source of purest pleasure, truest friend to me. So for Tim, life has been about letting go of what will not last to embrace that which is of far greater significance now and for all eternity. So for some, this parable illustrates how precious you are and each child of God is in God's sight, precious enough enough to give up Christ's own life, to have you with him forever. Which of these two meanings, though, may be the one that meets you where you are today? Know that you are worth everything to Jesus, and that being so loved, you may come to say for yourself that Jesus is the treasure of your heart. Amen.